Smarty Pants. Take a look down at your feet. That's right, your feet. What are you wearing? Shoes? Socks? Fuzzy cat slippers? Meow. Some of you might be barefoot, but I bet I can guess what a lot of you are wearing. Is it sneakers? And even if you're not wearing sneakers now, chances are you wore some recently. And whether they're high tops, low tops, sneakers designed for basketball, skateboarding, climbing, hiking, jogging, or just your limited edition collectible Yeezys, there's no denying sneakers are the most popular shoes in the world today. But guess what? That wasn't always the case. So where did sneakers come from? How'd they get so popular? And how did they even get the name sneakers? Get ready for another whiff of science on Who Smarted? Who Smarted? Who Smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun on Who Smarted? Hey, Smarty Pants. Take a listen to the following scene and see if you can guess what's wrong. Listen close. Welcome, sports fans, to the Summer Olympic Games. We're awaiting the start of the men's 100-meter dash. The fastest runners from all over the world are here ready to burn up the track. And they're off! Sven Van Struberwaffel of Sweden has taken an early lead in his wooden clogs. But Greg Hines of America is right behind him in his tap shoes. Look out, Mar. In the outer lane, it's the English runner in giant clown shoes. Oh, no! Ah! The Englishman has tripped over his own shoes and landed on Heinz and Van Struberwaffel. They're lying in a pile. Here comes the Canadian runner in his ice skates. Who wears ice skates to attract me? Oh! Oh, oh, oh! And he, too, has fallen over. Oh, the humanity! Psst, hey, it's me again. Your trusty narrator. Sorry to interrupt the race. It's not much of a race. Doesn't look like anyone's going to reach the finish line. So all of you listening, were you able to figure it out? What's wrong with this race? <laughs> Something is definitely missing here. Did you say sneakers? Good job. It's pretty hard to run a proper race without them. And now the Canadian has taken off his ice skates and is putting on flip-flops. Yes! No, but they keep flying off. Look out, incoming! Ow! But as big a role as sneakers play in your daily life now, it might surprise you to learn that wasn't always the case. Anthropologists believe ancient people grew fed up having to walk over rocks and twigs barefoot. Ah! Ooh, ooh, ow! And started wearing shoes about 40,000 years ago. But sneakers, as we know them, didn't appear until the last century. Oh. That's because sneakers wouldn't exist without a major invention of the mid-1800s. So, what invention do you think it is? Is it A. Vulcanized rubber B. Basketball Swish! Or C. The waffle iron Waffle! If you guessed A. Vulcanized rubber, you're right. But if you guessed B or C, you deserve some credit too. Really? That's because sneakers are what they are today. Thanks a lot to basketball and waffles. Huh? We'll get to that in a bit. But first, off to the racetrack. No, not the Olympic racetrack. I'm talking race cars. Hear that sound? It's the sound of car tires scorching the pavement. Many of those tires would be Goodyear's, named after Charles Goodyear. In 1839, he invented a type of rubber called vulcanized rubber, which could, um live long and prosper, and not melt in the sun like the other rubber of his day. This vulcanized rubber could be molded into flexible things that would not lose their shape in the heat. Things like tires, shoe soles, and basketballs. Now, you may have heard a thing or two about this game called basketball. Maybe even on our Who Smarted Basketball episode. Who Smarted? It was invented in 1891, and quickly became popular around the world. But to play, you had to have the right kind of shoe. Dress shoes were too stiff. Boots too heavy. Slippers slide and fall apart. And stilts? Well, they might help with your dunk, but have you tried running with those things? 
Basketball shoes needed to be light, durable, and most important, flexible. In 1916, the U.S. rubber company started selling shoes that fit this need with rubber soles and canvas tops called Keds. If you want shoes with lots of pep, get Keds, kids, Keds. They still exist today. Maybe your parents once owned a pair. They were good, but a year later, sneakers took a big jump forward. When shoemaker Converse introduced a rubber and canvas basketball shoe that is still called one of the greatest sneakers of all time, the Chuck Taylor All-Star. Chuck Taylor himself was a basketball player. And in the 1920s, he went to high schools across the country, selling the shoes. Seeing a basketball player wear these shoes made athletes want to have them. I heard they make you jump higher. Does that sound familiar? Athletic stars have played a big role in making sneakers super popular since the very beginning. But do you know who else made sneakers a hit? You did. Huh? Well, not you specifically, unless you're 80 years old. What? In the 1950s, kids were ahead of the game, getting into sneakers long before adults did. Oh. At a time when only athletes wore sneakers, kids started wearing them to school and sales started to jump. Still, for a long time, sneakers were limited to the basketball courts and schools. But then something happened during a Sunday breakfast that changed everything. Remember when I said waffles helped make sneakers the shoes they are today? Waffles! Yep, it's true. But we'll munch on that story and tell you how sneakers got their name right after I lace up. Hello, Smarty fans. As Who Smarted listeners, you've heard me talk a lot about digestion and what's going on inside your tummy. That's because your whole body's health starts in your gut. But did you know 61% of people experience digestive discomfort? Everything from bloating and constipation to gastrointestinal irritation. I know, not fun. Luckily, I found Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. It sets a new standard in probiotics that not only provides relief from occasional digestive discomfort, but also supports healthy gut immune function and promotes smooth, clear, healthy skin. As someone who loves going with his gut, I use Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic every day as part of my daily routine to benefit my gut, skin, and heart health. So listen to your gut with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. Go to seed.com backslash 25smarted and use code 25smarted to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash 25smarted, code 25smarted. And we're back. Do me a favor. If you're wearing or near a pair of sneakers right now, check out the bottoms. What do you see? Dirt? Squished bugs? Dog poop? Forget that. Instead, look at the design of the sneaker itself. Do you see something there? Maybe a pattern of grooves and shapes that pop out? That's the sneaker's tread. Ah. It keeps sneakers from sliding. The grooves push away liquids that can come between your sneaker and the ground. And the rubber bumps create friction with the ground. Think of a pencil. If you slide the rubber eraser across a smooth table, it's going to try to stop. That's friction. And the bumps on your sneakers do the same thing to keep you from sliding. But early sneakers weren't like that. They were smoother than the sneakers of today. And that was fine for the track and basketball court. But these shoes did not have the grip needed for all the surfaces we walk over during everyday use. Shoemaker Bill Bowerman wanted to make a sneaker that could go anywhere. But he didn't know how. Then, one Sunday morning in 1971, as he was having breakfast with his wife, the answer suddenly struck. Some more waffles, dear? Absolutely, Barbara. These waffles are A, B, C, D, delicious. How do you get them so perfectly shaped? You can thank my waffle iron for that. Here you go, dear. Whoa, 
I almost tripped over your barrel of scalding hot molten rubber. I don't know why you keep it in the kitchen. I'm trying to create a new soul for my sneakers, and I want to have it nearby in case inspiration strikes. Oh, honey, I'm sure it will. You've been thinking about this for so long. Oops, we're out of syrup. There's one in the pantry. Be right back. Wait a second. This waffle shape, it's perfect. The waffle iron has squares and grooves. If I can make a rubber sole like that, I'll have more traction with the ground. If I just rip open the waffle iron and pour the hot molten rubber into it, yes, that's it. <laughs> what have you done to my waffle iron? Okay, maybe it didn't go exactly like that, but Bill Bowerman did destroy his wife's waffle maker with his molten rubber. <laughs> and he did perfect a waffle sole pattern for his shoes, creating a sneaker that could go anywhere. Just as running was becoming a popular activity in America. Bill sold a ton of these shoes through the little company he co-founded. You may have heard of it, they're called Nike. Whoa. And Nike would go on to change the sneaker world forever with the help of another basketball legend, one even bigger than Chuck Taylor. Introducing from the Chicago Bulls number 23, Michael Jordan. In the mid-1980s, when NBA superstar Michael Jordan took the court wearing new eye-catching red and black sneakers called Air Jordans. Air Jordans from Nike. Everyone wanted to have a pair. Did you see the new Jordans? Since then, sneakers have developed all kinds of designs and colors, becoming a fashion item, something people wear just because they look and feel good, even if they don't play basketball and prefer sitting on the couch to running. Want to watch a movie? Today, everyone wears sneakers. Hip-hop stars, Hollywood celebrities, even world leaders like Vice President Kamala Harris, who can often be seen wearing her Chuck Taylor sneakers. But why are they called sneakers? Any ideas? Call them out. Interesting. Some of you got it. But for those who aren't sure, the answer is simple. They're called that because... Urgh, brains! Whoa, a mean-looking zombie just snuck up behind me. I didn't even hear him coming. Did you? How did he... Wait a second. Hey, zombie. Urgh. Mind if we swap shoes? I'll take your sneakers, and you take these clogs I've been wearing. Urgh. Great. Now go over there and try that again. Not so easy to sneak up on me this time, is it? Unlike most shoes, which are loud, the rubber soles on sneakers hardly make a sound when they hit the ground. This allows you to sneak up on somebody, hence the name Sneakers. Brains! I know you're hungry. Come on, let's get some waffles. This episode, Sneakers, was written by Dave Beaudry and voiced by Charlotte Cohn, Adam Tex Davis, Sheffield Chastain, Jenna Hoban, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn, who smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez, and the lyrics were written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Sparted was created and produced by Jerry Colver and Adam Tex Davis. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. But who Sparted? 